Oh, hello. I wanted to come online this evening and have a chat about trance mediumship. Why it's important to your mediumship, to your development. And I have some book recommendations. Pile of books here. So, tomorrow and next Sunday, I start a couple of um, trance courses that I'll be teaching. Now, you kind of think to yourself, why bother? Why develop trance? What does it bring to you? Well, the answer is it brings many things. Traditionally, people see trance mediumship as um, one of those weird things that only a select few people can do or should do. It's very niche in, in some people's minds that um, only the kind of extra weird people do anything with trance. But for me, the ability to use trance and use altered states of consciousness, because that's all you're doing, you're changing your state of consciousness. And that's something you do every day. It's part of your life. It's that moment where you're daydreaming. It's the moment where you're looking out the window and your mind is elsewhere. It's not focusing on maybe what's being said. Trance is a beautiful aspect of mediumship. It's something that I really believe will enhance all areas of your mediumistic development. So even if you say to me, I don't want to be a trance medium per se, to deliver philosophy, then I still would recommend it. In the sense that I would recommend that we develop that receptivity, that ability to make yourself available to the spirit world, to the spirit communicator. So we're talking of someone's loved one. How does trance feel to me? feels beautiful. It feels loving. It feels like I'm in a connection that I don't want to let go of, that I'm feeling this otherworldly influence. And I guess they are otherworldly. They're in the spirit world. I'm feeling this influence where the character, not just the image, the character personality, the persona, the thoughts, the humour, all of those things that you would associate with someone if they were sitting right in front of you now, all of those things I become aware of. I become part of that experience where it seems that there is not um, a separation between me and that spirit communicator. There is a sense of coming together, a sense of getting to understand them with greater clarity than maybe I realized that I could have. So it's not about finding out their shoe size, their favorite color, what they like to eat. Sometimes it's about what do you want to say? What's your story? What's your message to your recipient who may well be sitting in front of you, either in person or over the internet. So what difference does that make, you may ask? S feeling is believing, all right? Often they say seeing is believing, but feeling for me is believing. So if I see an image in my mind, Naturally, part of my mind questions whether the image is of my mind or through my mind from spirit. And that's understandable. You know, we, generally speaking, we want to work with the highest degree of integrity. And of course, it's a human trait, it's a human um, characteristic to worry sometimes that we don't have the connection that we want. So how can we change that? Well, over the time 
that I'd been using trance with my mediumship. You get to have moments of realization where you realize that thoughts and and perspectives and so on are coming through your mind and you're not necessarily thinking about them yourself but you're becoming aware of them being shared with you and who is sharing those thoughts well the answer is your guides inspirers loved ones other people's loved ones they can use the ability to connect to your consciousness your mind and your heart in such a way that it becomes a tangible experience for your recipient and for you as the medium now there's lots of um, confusion i would say misinterpretation of what qualifies as genuine um, entrancement with the spirit world well a lot of the students that work with me there's this hesitancy this doubt this fear that comes into them as they'll say Andy, I was whatever being spoken through me. I wasn't fully out of it. I wasn't taken away to this otherworldly place. My recollection is there to some degree. And when people think to themselves that the state of entrancement involves you um, not having any influence, any awareness of what's going on. That's a great hindrance to your development because we have to realize that we are becoming part of something greater than ourselves, whether that be a spirit guide or inspirer whether that be a loved one in an evidential um, reading. In my experience, that's all I have, is the understanding and the awareness that as I attune myself to the communicator, as I have this internal dialogue with them, they respond to me. They become part of my awareness as their, their hold, if we use that description, becomes stronger. What I notice is my thoughts, my mind becomes subdued to some degree. And with time and practice, that degree of um, influence from the spirit communicator becomes greater quite simply they are able to exert more influence over you by not pushing you out of the way not removing you from the process not having you as some sort of bystander but by you understanding the process and allowing the development of the connection to unfold as it needs to on a case-by-case -case basis. So a loved one may need time to find that way of influencing you. And it may be that through a state of entrancement, you're not unaware you're not you know sitting there with your eyes closed and finding that a specific amount of time later you just wake up into this new reality what will happen is that you will find the communicator entrances you 
and the clairsentience, the clairvoyance, the clairaudience, the clairgustance, the clairalliance, the claircognizance are all working to one degree or another. And with that state of entrancement, you then feel yourself becoming party to the personality, the character, the way that the person really was when they were alive. You may find that the recipient watches you or listens to you and thinks to themselves, it's like the person, the medium, is becoming my loved one. It's like the characteristics, the traits, the poise, the stature, the posture are all changing to some degree. And it would remind you of things that your loved one used to do. So there's a very important distinction to be made that the state of entrancement, the state of influence from any communicator will vary. It will vary through their ability to merge, to blend, to become part of your consciousness. And it will also depend upon your proficiency as the medium to allow that process to happen by understanding how it happens. And therein lies the problem. Often there are many people that wish to develop this aspect, but if truth be known, they do not know how it actually happens. Closing your eyes and speaking differently is not entrancement. You can call it what you want. But what you will find is when you close your eyes, you enter into that receptive state of mind. You allow the blending to take place. And that time that you need is unique to you. It may be that that process happens really quite quickly. It may be that it takes quite a while because you're finding your feet. You're finding the way that works between you and the spirit world. There is not one size that fits all. In my classes, I encourage you to be who you need to be. I give you my experience, my perspective, but I encourage you to find out who you are, to find out how your connection works because you are unique. That won't be a surprise to you to learn that you are unique. So why, when we're developing trance, would we seek to be the same as someone else? Why would we seek to remove our individuality when we're good enough as we are? However, there are some truths, there are some understandings that are not unique to you, that we must understand the process of communication, what constitutes genuine trance, how you can tell as the medium that you're in a state of entrancement and how you can tell someone else is in that state of entrancement. So I would advocate that trance mediumship isn't as unique as maybe people think. I would say that there is a great deal to be learned from those that are willing to place time into developing this aspect of mediumship and watch as it enhances all aspects of your mediumship. I know from when I'm doing evidential readings or when I'm practicing within a circle environment I know that as I become that communicator, I feel that essence. I feel myself entering into the flow of that consciousness. 
and I truly know that I'm connected. That then enables me to lose some of the self-doubt, some of that voice in my head that doubts that, you know, it really is the person that I believe it to be. So, you've heard me speak for around about 15 minutes now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attune myself to my spirit guides. What I want them to do is to blend with me, to merge their consciousness with mine. And I will allow them, I will invite them to share that time with me, share their consciousness. And let's see where that goes. So I'm just gonna take a little drink of water and I'm gonna retune myself. So there will be silence for however long I need. And then when we come back, I have some book recommendations that I wish to share. And we will see where we go from there. So bear with me. I'm going to go into that state of attunement with the spirit world. Hello, my friends. Hello. Now, the boy seeks to demonstrate his merging of the consciousness of himself and the spirit communicators of which I am one. It is not a particular difficult process to undergo, 
but it is one that involves a degree of trust and understanding between medium and spirit communicator. The consciousness that connects to him is ever present. It is not a destination, more of a coming together through the attunement process. That consciousness is everywhere. And he seeks to take his mind to it. This way of life, because it is a way of life, it is the truth of a way of being that has been lost in many ways. Eons have passed and still this process of attunement, of receptivity to the spirit world is among you. There is talk of pioneers from maybe one or two centuries ago. In the grand scheme of things, it is but a fleeting glimpse. The oracles, the seers, the sages of old would predate these pioneers by many centuries. It is merely another stage of the same thing. Another stage of awareness of a discarnate entity who is seeking to influence or impart a wisdom or a truth or to share a voice or a message through someone that no longer has the voice to someone that does have a voice who will act as a speaker, a spokesman or woman. We are nothing without you. And you merely have potential only without us. So you see there is a vested interest between us both. For us to have the opportunity, you must be willing to be receptive. And for you to be receptive to spirit, you must attune yourselves to us. Make yourself available to us. Who would seek to do such a thing? What type of person would seek to have a discarnate entity speak through them. Well, the truth is that you are merely a passenger within the vehicle that you call a body. Yeah. The body that you have, my friends, is a temporary garment that you wear. But who you really are is the etheric form seeking to have this, this thing that you call a body for you to walk or feel the sun upon your face.
spirit uh, is a permanent thing, a permanent state of being, this consciousness, ever evolving, finding new ways to understand the confusion of life. As the temporary custodian adopts the flesh form, oh. and what an encumbrance it is! What an encumbrance it is to feel the weight of man's woes upon his shoulders to bend under the pressure of disease or famine or gluttony or the weight of expectation from the world around you. Expectation is a terrible mistress. Expectation weighs upon you when you are seeking to nullify this doubt in your mind, is there something greater than my physical form? And if so, what should it be? Look at the world around you. Look at its greatness. Look at the beauty and say to yourself, what could have possibly created what I see? You, as a consciousness, create what you see. You, as a consciousness, singly or globally, are creating what you see. Is God not consciousness? Is this God not a deity, but actually consciousness in its purest form? And as you seek to express your consciousness, you create and you destroy. When you direct your mind, you can create a great artwork a beautiful building, something that uplifts your very soul. Oh, you can seek power. You can seek to control those around you because you see a weakness within them that they are not willing or able to accomplish their dreams, their hopes, or even to have something approaching a normal life. You may see an opportunity for manipulation, for covering over the truth of what a beautiful place the world is, by telling them how terrible it is, how woeful it is, and how if only you would listen to them, they can make it better. How about you stand up and you rise to your feet and you say, I can create the life that I want. My life, my journey, my destiny is in my own hands. And that, my friends, is the truth. You do not need to follow anyone. Follow the truth of a loving path. Love, my friends, is the eternal truth. Love is the reason that you should get out of bed in the morning. Love is the reason that you should look at those that you love and tell them regularly. 
Tell those that you love that you love them. Do not take it for granted that they will know. For the truth is the world can seem like a formidable place. However, there is a great beauty within the words and the wisdom of those around you. Those people that you may see sitting in a chair, their face is a mass of wrinkles, their eyes glazed over by a lifetime of memories. Look at them, appreciate with every fiber of your being that those wrinkles were earned. That they were earned by toil, by experience, and that great wisdom within that face, within those eyes, that mind that may be forgetful. Do not pass those people by. Seek them as the greatest purveyors of wisdom that you are likely to encounter in the journey of your life. For they truly are filled with wisdom. And many, through the passing of the ages, through the loss of those that they love, feel lonely. They feel like their life has been wasted, that their body is failing them, their mind might become forgetful, but they still have something to offer. They are the true pioneers, people whose wisdom pours from their very skin. If only you would allow yourself to listen to them. This journey, this coming together of spirit and spirit, both discarnate and incarnate, this is who you are. You were never designed or intended to be separate to each other. And yet you are shown from the day you are intelligible how to see the differences between you and your brethren. Well, I say, drop this false ideology. Look at your brother and sister and see all that is the same. See not the skin or the creed, but see the similarities that their body and mind is filled with love and endeavor. That as they wake in the morning, they seek what you seek, happiness, fulfillment of their soul. What is their soul's purpose? What is the journey of life to them? It is the same as you. Finding their place, finding what makes their heart sing. That tune within you needs to get out, to be expressed as music or art. Is a technical understanding? Is a mother or a father, a brother, a sister, a husband or a wife? Whatever you seek to do in your life, I would implore you to fill it with love. Fill your heart with the one thing that costs you nothing in a world of great expense, and that is love. 
there can be no greater truth in the life that you lead. That you were born into love, you return to love. So why not fill the bit in between with more of that great thing that we call love? We seek to impart many truths through the boy. And to some degree we succeed. But he is there, part of it, listening. He is not our puppet on a string. He is our brother. And we love him. We just seek to spend time with him. And for him to show more people like you that you are so much more than you realize. Do not allow anyone to tell you that you cannot until you have tried it yourself and found out whether you can or cannot. You are all equal. You may feel unequal at times, but let me assure you in the eyes of the Spirit, you are all equal. Share your equality. Share your love. Share the promise that is within you. Don't leave this life that you have with too many regrets and sorrows. Seek to fill it with many things that will give you cause for joy. Seek to sit within the spirit realm when your physical form has failed you and say, I lived a good life. I lived a life I could be proud of. I made mistakes, but at least I did something. At least I had the tenacity, the willpower to do something about my life, that you are in control of it. It does not just pass you by unless you are willing to allow it to be so. My friends, we do not seek to lecture you, just to remind you of the great power that you have. Every one of you, an equal. Every one of you, an ambassador, a pioneer for your own soul's journey. Make the best of what you have and do not live with regrets. My friends, we will return the boy to you. And it is a great honor to share this time with you. And we wish many blessings upon you all. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, I hope whatever was said made sense. I hope you can see that trance is a beautiful, beautiful way of working with spirit. Um, I love it deeply. I really do. And 
I've got two courses, one starting this Sunday, July 2nd, um, for confident trans mediums. And it's to inspire, to encourage, and to move forward to use our ability to the greatest of our potential. So that was a short demonstration of like a philosophical aspect of trans mediumship. On July the 9th, I have a course suited to complete beginners. And all of us, excuse me, all of us were beginners. We aren't just born doing this. We learn it. We make mistakes. We have people share their wisdom with us. That happened for me. Many people have made a great difference, a great difference to my life. And that's all I seek to do for others, is to share that understanding. Because it's truly a beautiful aspect of mediumship that will give you an insight and an understanding that maybe you don't realize you can have. I love it deeply. Now, one of the great influences in my development was a lady many of you will be aware of, a lady called Helen DeVita. Now, Helen lives over in Ireland, and she's a former tutor of the Arthur Finlay College and highly respected within mediumship. And she's just a great lady. You chat to her, wisdom pulls forth in abundance. And while Helen no longer teaches at the college, the ability to access that wisdom is ever present. And I've got four books here that I want to um, go through and I want to talk about. And I want to just make you aware of them. Maybe you're not aware. Maybe you're seeking guidance. Now, one of the services that I offer is the spiritual assessment. Um, what we're looking at is the potential within a person's mediumistic and psychic awareness, looking at aspects that may wish to be developed. As we connect to the energy of the medium of the person, and that can be done remotely or in person. So you're looking to offer clarity, guidance for the path, the potential areas that may wish to be developed by the medium. And there's this wonderful book here. Now, hopefully I can get that close enough. So it's called Exploring the Art of This Spiritual Assessment. Now, a unique guide to an empowering aspect of the work of an international psychic medium. Now, Helen has got lots of hints and tips so like insights to the spiritual assessment skills and attributes of the spiritual assessor i.e say it would be me or helen or whoever the medium is talking about things like the psychic faculties spiritual energies the auric field abilities and potentials the journey of the spiritual assessment the space to create the ideal assessment um and all of the things that you need to consider when you're working. Now, it's 100 pages long, thereabouts. And what it does is if you are working with people and they're seeking guidance from you, it would be very worthwhile you get in that book and it's available on the different formats, um, probably as an ebook. certainly obviously as a hard copy, as you can see. And there's just an absolute goldmine of information that can enable you to offer a better service to your client. Because often we don't need an evidential reading. Sometimes we just need someone to say, um, to offer a perspective of the ways that you're, um, development may wish to go. So I need to mention that book first. Now, here's another one. Love this one. Look at all the yellow notes that I've got there. Here we go. The Art and Science of Clairvoyance, again by Helen. Now, 
clairvoyance is that clear seeing okay so it is that inner mind that's mind screen now there's a native american um, gentleman i believe it was frank fool's crow and he would talk about the mind screen he talked about this screen inside his mind where he saw images and he saw what he needed to do when he was talking about doctrine and medicine and healing in the native american culture now he lived to be a a wonderful i think 99 years old um at a time when the life expectancy of a native american gentleman would have probably been half that now it shows that the clairvoyance isn't a western mediumistic faculty it is everyone everyone has it everyone does it everyone can do it and it's the most wonderful way of receiving information from the spirit world so let's look at the different topics so we have like timeless natural clairvoyance classifying clairvoyance the power of vision second sight in neuroscience so we see helen's a very intelligent lady and she has a background in psychology or something related to that so apologies if i've got that wrong helen but that's kind of what I remember. Um, clairvoyance, precognition, prophecy, and fortune telling. Pathways to developing your clairvoyant ability. Now, there's lots of um, actions, as in exercises that you can do that Helen will, you know, explains in the book. There's stuff like this, like clairvoyance with symbols, signs, and visual memory. So the spirit world uses what's in here what you've remembered what you're aware of they will use something let's say um the communicator needed to get across that they were of a medical um, background so they may show you something like a red cross just to say this is the sign the symbol um to represent that i am of a medical profession for example eight steps to empower your clairvoyance um navigating the obstacles of clairvoyant development and then speaks about people that are famous, you know, with their prophecies, people like Nostradamus, Edgar Casey, and Baba Vanga. So there is, that's a thicker book. So I reckon there's a couple of hundred pages there. No, 228. So a wonderful book, The Art of Science, The Art and Science of Clairvoyance. Number two. Now trusting the intelligence of spirit again okay. it's by helen do you see a theme here now over the many 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 years that helen has been doing the work that she does she's obviously you know had a few experiences that have given her lots of stuff to share with the likes of you and i now let's look at the introduction here so there's lots of things where she shares experience that she's had with communications from the spirit world um, examples of how she's received information beautiful stories and i don't want to spoil it for you because let me tell you this book got read in about a day all right and then Obviously, Helen's very down to earth and very matter of fact. So, you know, the stuff like we need to discern the genuine intelligence of spirit. So we can't say um, just anything and say, well, spirit said it. You know, we have to discern what is right and what is our own mind and what is just absolute bunkum. All right. So there's lots of, there's not bunkum. What sort of word is that? So there's lots of wonderful stuff in this book. And I highly I recommend that one. Last but not least, this is Helen's latest book, The Anatomy of Intuition, Nurturing Your Soul's Gift. Now, this has lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff in here. So let's look at the sort of things that we're talking about. So the intuitive soul theory. We have an everyday intuition are you intuitive or psychic when you know a personal experience sorry when you know a personal experience 
grounding the four energy states physical mental emotional and spiritual the intuitive hearts dowsing psychometry the mind body and soul is talking to you etc etc there is an absolute gold mine of information 260 odd pages i've lost my place now why do I mention these books? If you go to helendevita.com, Helen has um, CDs. She has downloads. She has development material that can help you with your trance, that can help you with your understanding just by reading about experiences, reading about all of the different things that she has learned, tools to enable you to make a better connection. And I just want to kind of highlight the great wisdom that is out there. And so please do take a look. You can find Helen also on Facebook. Um, so maybe take a look at her pages. So she's got one that I believe is called Writing um, a Spirited Journey. And so there's lots of um, experiences that Helen shares to enable you to become a better medium and to give you food for thought. And ultimately, that is what people like that are for. Now, before I go, I just want to mention the sort of things um, that I offer as a medium. So trance development is a real passion, as if you've probably um, guessed already. So whether you're a complete beginner, a novice, whether you're more experienced with your trance mediumship and you want guidance, you want help, you just want other people to work with that are like you, I offer that opportunity. We can work as a group. I offer one-to-one -one mentoring. Okay, so you can go to my website, andrewcodling.com, and you can book private sessions with me where we can discuss your needs, your wishes, and we can develop an understanding and an approach to give you a better connection for your trans mediumship, for your regular mediumship, and we can work in that way. If you want an evidential reading, we can do those too. We can do the spiritual assessment if you're looking for clarity or guidance on your mediumistic path. So do take a look. You can find more material on my YouTube page. So it's Andrew Codling, Medium and Tutor. You can find me on Facebook, again, Andrew Codling, Medium and Tutor. I'm incredibly passionate about what I do. And I like to offer a safe, a supportive, and a relaxed environment, a fun environment to learn in. Okay? I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be like you. I want you to find out what makes you, you. And all of those questions that you may think are silly, I've probably already asked them. I will give you the benefit of all the mistakes I've made, of the wisdom that has been shared with me. You know, through people like Helen and others, wisdom is shared, it is passed down. That's why we have it. Okay, so it's not to be kept I don't own wisdom, and I will share that wisdom that has been shared with me. And I will tell you about the people that have shared it, all right, and why it meant something to me. So I will leave this video, this recording now. And thank you for your time. If you watch some of this, all of it, and maybe our paths will cross in the future. But for now, I'll say goodbye, thank you, and I wish you a wonderful life. See ya.